Welcome to Dream by Design with Melissa Banks, where women share their dreams, struggles, and successes. How they were able to persevere despite the fear and create a the life they want and deserve. If you're looking for inspiration to move you past where you normally would stop, then this is the show for you. Here's your host, Melissa Banks. Welcome to Dream by Design with Melissa Banks. I'm excited you could be with us today. I'm your host, Melissa Banks. Today, we continue our special series, Women Who Shine. These amazing women will share with us how they're able to keep shining despite the circumstance. I'm excited to talk with them today, and I have a special co-host with me today, Deborah L. Hunter. Deborah is an energetic, charismatic Mississippi native. She's a former television and radio host a celebrated and highly sought-after chef, artist, motivational speaker, and author. Welcome, Deborah, to the show. Excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Melissa. I'm excited to be here. Well, wonderful. Deborah, first of all, I want to just open up and congratulate you on all the amazing things that you have going on. Because, you know, we already knew you were an amazing chef, but now we know that you are a great author as well. You have some amazing children's books that have just recently been released. How are you feeling? And and congratulations again on such success. Thank you so much, Melissa. I think I'm feeling like a really big kid myself. I'm just really happy for the opportunity that God has given me to share um, this sweet little dream with so many other, you know, families and children across the world. Uh, It was inspired by my own grandchildren. I've been blessed to have four. I have two girls and two boys, and they are just the love of my life. And writing these books was just a way of me sharing love and kindness with them, and it has spiraled into me being able to share with other people. Now, that's so amazing. Now, Deborah, I just want us to talk a little bit about the women who shine and what your inspiration was when you decided that you wanted to show these women publicly. You wanted the world to know how they had inspired and impacted your life. Which is very different. You know, oftentimes we as women don't tell other women when they inspire us, when they encourage us. But you wanted to do that and you wanted to do it publicly. What was your inspiration behind that? Well, Melissa, um, my grandmother used to always sing this song. Uh, It's an old spiritual, and the song says, Give me my flowers while I live. And so it was just me just wanting to share some love and kindness with women that I know get up every day and give life their absolute best. Um, And it's what I truly believe, you know, it ought to be first in nature for us as women to just love on each other, to be able to compliment each other in kindness, to support one another without it being a cause, just because it is what we should just do as sisters, as friends, as mothers and aunties. We ought to just love on each other. That's wonderful. Well, because you were so inspired, we were also inspired. I was just so honored to even be among the women that you recognized that day. And it excited me because I love pushing women and encouraging women. And for for you to acknowledge us in that way, and I said, you know what, I want to highlight these women even more. And that's what inspires this entire series of Women Who Shine. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Deborah, and give you a chance to introduce our Women Who Shine. Melissa, thank you so much. I can't tell you how excited I am to have this amazing young woman as our guest today. I have known her since I was about 23 years old. Uh, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but I have known her to be – the kind of human being that has given more of herself in love and kindness, sometimes more than she should. And so this interview today is going to be so exciting because we're going to learn a lot of things about who she is. Her name is Janice Singleton. Janice, welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, Liz. <laughs> We are so happy to have you here today, Janice, and I just want to thank you for sharing with us. You do so many amazing things uh, in the world. You are an author, you are a life coach, and you are a speaker. But you're also somebody, like I said earlier, that I've known for a very long time. 
And I just have a few questions that I'd like uh, to ask you. Is that okay? Question, Dan, is, is why is it so important to put yourself first, to live in self-love? Why is it so important? Mm-hmm. It's important for me because to put myself first, and like you said earlier, you know, where I like to give back and to put myself first, you know, first, I'm Janice. Um, I'm a woman who has made fair, a fair share of mistakes. However, I never gave up on myself because I know God never gave up on me. So I just like to inspire. I just like to help wherever I can fit in it. That's absolutely wonderful. And um, so, Janice, you know, of course, uh, I got to see you um, on some levels go through some of those things. And because of that, you've been able to write a beautiful book can, or actually two books. Can you share with our audience a little bit about those books and why they were uh, created in the well, first place? Yes, well, it's actually three books. <laughs> ah! I wrote a third book. Yes. Um, so um, my first book, I'm the author of Couch. And um, the reason I wrote the book called because back in 2007, I was working with the uh, Department of Corrections, Mississippi Department of Corrections, and um, where before that, I actually owned my own business, Singleton Tax Service. So I started a business like at the age of 18, doing taxes, which I learned um, how to do the taxes uh, in the 11th grade, I think, in economics. I can't really remember, but... I worked for the Department of Corrections for around 10 years, and for whatever reason, um, I started out having an addiction, which was gambling. So I would gamble every day, and I really didn't realize that I had this addiction to gambling because, you know, most of the time when you think of addictions, you think that uh, people that go through addictions, you know, they can't pay their mortgage, they can't pay their bills because they're taking their money using it in the form of addiction that whatever addiction that they have. So I was always able to pay my bills, so I never fit in I never thought that I fitted in that category. So one particular day I was at work and um I used to work in visitation and I did something unethical. I took uh names um of inmates and took them and took brought them into my business and I filed fraudulent tax returns on those inmates which I'm very remorseful for, and that's something that I deal with every day. So during my time of incarceration, I was laying um, down one day. No, I was actually walking the track, and I was like, you know, I really need to tell my story because, you know, this is an ongoing crime. People do it every day. It's so easy to do, you know, when you operating from your business or from the uh, privacy of your home. And my, at that time, my business was located in the back of my home. So I ended up getting in trouble, and I was sentenced to 52 months of fed time. I actually did probably about 30-something months of fed time. But during the time that I was incarcerated, I wanted to, uh, you know, use some of my time wisely. So I wrote my first book, was Caught, and I talk about um, the redemption of um, what I did, my life that I lived before I decided to commit this crime, and how easy it is to get in trouble, how easy it is to uh, make bad decisions and to make bad choices. So I uh, wrote the book, and I published it. I published the book once I got home. But the book, it, it just talks about, um, again, where I started and where I ended. But I did not let that be my downfall when I came home, even though I had a lot of setbacks when I came home. You know, I had to really pretty much start all over again. It's like I had to, you know, take a job that where I was only making minimum wages. My first job was Goodwill, you know, where I worked um, as a dispatch for like a, a year, and then I was promoted to accounting. So, you know, I had to really start from the bottom. But, you know, with faith, I decided not to um, let that hinder me and, and let these setbacks just, you know, take place in my life, even though I did have a few setbacks. So then I was inspired to write my second book, which is um, Life After Prison, Release Life After Prison. And it talks about the things that um, 
ex-offenders go through when they're released. You know, you think because you're released, you know, you go do that, your time at the halfway house to um, to really get back in. They teach you where they're supposed to teach you how to get back into uh, go back into society and to be a productive citizen. But um, I wrote the book because when the time, when you come home, you know, family members, your friends. People really don't understand what you went through, what you're going through, and people, you know, tend to think that you kind of, you know, look crazy, you know, and things like that. So it was real difficult for me. So that's what inspired me to write my second book. And then my third book I wrote, which was um, Forced to Walk by Faith. I had a job working in wow. the camera, like I say, with Goodwill. And for some reason, my supervisor, he just, you know, picked on me so much. And, you know, they have me thinking because Goodwill, I love Goodwill, and I have nothing to say bad about Goodwill. It's a beautiful place to work. They cater to people with backgrounds and people with disabilities. And so my supervisor, once I was promoted to accounting, it's like every day he just, we just play every day. And, you know, sometimes people will instill in you that because you have a felon on your record that you can't do anything else. And he was that type of person. So after five years, um, after five years terminated, I was terminated. So all I could think about, you know, I was terminated for no reason. And, and I was like, well, you know, it's time for, you know, you served your time. There's time for you to do something else. And what, that's what inspired me to write my book, Force to Walk by Faith, because sometimes we get settled and, you know, we get complacent in jobs where we think mm-hmm. that we can't do anything else because people tell you that you can't. So that's what inspired me to write my third book. And um, so after writing my third book, you know, I just opened up my eyes to a lot of things. And right now I'm an entrepreneur. I um, do finances for several, for multiple business. And it's great. You know, Janice, as you were talking, and I just started going back over, you know, our life journey as young women, and one of the things that I um, want to talk to you about is finding out, because what I watched you do uh, personally is I watched you take care of a lot of people uh, as a a 21-year-old. And so if you could speak to women about why is it so important to to be able to find a positive outlets to take care of your body, mind, and spirit opposed to, like you said, you know, uh, gambling, because it can start out as fun, but it can also end up in a, you know, a really difficult place. So if you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, why is it so important to, to find yourself in support groups or, uh, like I said, using your creativity to do something positive? Oh, okay. Well, um, what I can say about that is that um, if you find it um, for females or guys as well, but if you're finding yourself down in to like having addictions or going through any kind of uh, problems, sometimes we, you know, we we never think about support groups. We never think about reaching out for counseling. We never think about that we need this help because we're so. We th- we just think that we can handle everything ourselves, but we can't. And when we tend to handle things ourselves with man, we mess it up. So we have to give it to God. We have to give it to Christ. And I would just tell women, you know, with your um, being positive with your mind, body, and spirit, that you have to, you know, just put God first, and you have to just, when you're down and you feel like you're going through things, you have to reach out to support groups. Like during the time that I had the uh, gambling, which I didn't think it was an addiction until the judge told me, he was like, you know, you really have an addiction to gambling. And that's when I found out that I really did have an addiction to gambling. So once I was released, I ended up going to support groups to help me deal with the uh, addiction that I had and the things that I was going through. So I would just say that, you know, to keep your mind just clear and to stay away from negative things and negative people when you're feeling down, you know, just look out for support groups. Reach out to women, you know, that's empowering women that you look up to for support that can help you along your journey. Janice, I I can't tell you how proud I am of you uh, to see your strength and to see you come back and do so many amazing things. 
Um, and I have one last question before I turn it back over to Melissa. I'd like to know what is your personal mission as a coach to inspire other women? What's your message? My message to um, inspire um, other women is first, you know, you have to keep the faith in God. And you have, and I would, uh, like right now, I've had a lot of support. So what I do um, to keep to keep the uh, faith or the mission is to help women that are uh, coming out of the uh, prison system to encourage them and try to, uh, you know, reach out to them and let them know that you have a second life. You have, I mean, a second chance in life. You you can do things just because you have a felony on your back. You are able to still conquer. You are able to still uh, have your dreams. You're able to still have that desire or whatever you want to do. And most of the people that's coming out of the system, they're entrepreneurs. You know, they take the time during the incarceration of finding an outlet of something that they like to do. And once they're home, they can actually you know, do nails and then become their own boss, you know. So I just, um, my mission is to help others not to head down the wrong path. And that's what I like to uh, talk to women about, especially when I see people, you know, making bad choices and bad decisions. You know, I like to just give them my story and let them know that, you know, it's not worth it. It's not it's not pretty, that's the ugly thing, it's embarrassing, and that's something that you would not want to put your family through. So I really like to, that's really what I like to do is speak with women that have, you know, have backgrounds and have problems and just don't know how to move forth. And, you know, like I said, we try to do things ourselves because that's mostly what we were taught, you know. But until you give it to God and you just put your faith in God, you're going to be on the right track. But if you try to let man do it, then you're going to be lost. Wow, wow. Again, Janice, I am so proud of you, and I'm really grateful I'm that proud you, of you are too. my friend. <laughs> A lot. At this point, we're going to turn it back over to the incredible Melissa Banks. Thank you so much, Janice. You're welcome. Thank you, Janice, for this conversation. It was so inspired. I was just sitting here listening to you. And actually, Janice, I wanted to um, – take you back to something you said at the beginning of the conversation with, with Deborah. You said that at 18 years old, you launched your first business. So that tells me that you had an entrepreneurial spirit very early on. Do you, where did that come from? What what made you have that desire and to take it to that level at such a young age? What made me take it to that level? Uh, my mother, she uh, she raised three of us as a single parent. I am the oldest. And then, um, I have a brother and a sister where my brother was uh, killed back in, I think, 1986. But my mom, she worked so hard. She worked, you know, she did factory work. She would come home with blisters, you know, just tired, you know, not making any money, barely making money to uh, pay the bills. And I have always uh, would say, you know, when I get older, you know, I'm going to work and I'm going to take care of my mom. And that's what I actually did. I took care of my mom and I said, I'm a, uh, once I get older, you know, and I graduate from high school, not knowing at that time that I would launch my own business, I said, uh, I'm going to take care of my family, and most of all, I'm going to take care of my mother because as a single parent, we didn't miss a beat. You know, we we probably didn't have all the things that other people had, but we had shelter, we had food, and we had love. And my mom, like I say, she worked and she worked and she worked. And it inspired me. And once I uh, learned how to do the taxes um, in 11th grade, I started out doing taxes for family and friends, you know, charging like $5, $10. And then my business just grew. And once my business grew, you know, I ended up, you know, getting a location where, like I say, which was behind my home because I actually started uh, inside of my home. And that was that's what inspired me to launch my business is because of my mother, because watching her, you know, go to work, coming home, and just, you know, trying to make it and raise three kids. I think that's awesome, actually. I was very intrigued by that when you said that, because I, I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years now, but when I was at that age that you were, those thoughts was not there. I didn't know that they were there. I wasn't. They were 
I believe they're born into us, but I didn't recognize that it was right. there because of the time that I grew up. So, so I found that says a lot about what you were able to become. Even when you, right. and let me just say this, I pulled up Cult last night, which was the first time I had read uh, any of it, and I pulled it up, and I was just intrigued by the story. But I believe, and let me ask you, do you believe because of that, that spirit you have that even when you make this really bad choice, and I talk about that often, sometimes we, we all make bad choices, and sometimes it's a really bad choice that comes with a really big consequence. So let me just say that. Do you feel like that, that bringing up that you had, that, that desire to do more, helped you after you made that horrible mistake, after you had to pay the consequence from that horrible mistake, but you didn't let it stop you when you came back? And I know it wasn't easy when you came back. I know you were getting some looks from people you've known for a long time. Now yes, they're looking at yes, you funny. Yes. So how did you, how did you push through that and continue to move forward and rebuild your life? Well, how I pushed through it was um, during the time I came home. You know, I seek counseling. I I stayed in counseling for like five years, and at that time, I was a person that was had became sheltered. Uh, I didn't like large crowds. I didn't really like, you know, hanging around people. So I basically like stayed to myself. And you know, and I like I say, I was just working, and I was like, you know, you you have to uh, come out this shell and. Again, people would, you know, see me like, you know, like you're back at home or whatever. You know, that's what I mm-hmm. think they would be saying to themselves. But I had mm-hmm. a, a hard time adjusting really back into society because people are so hard to judge you and people really never mm-hmm. give you a chance, even though, you know, they take their one mistake over your year, of the, you know, over the years and hang it over your head. So I decided not to just let that be a negative uh, tool for me and to, um, you know, just get up and I just got back up running and I'm doing it. Well, that's that's way. a lot, and, though. Right. right. And then at the time, that, that, I was working, during the time that I was working from 8 to 5, I mean, from 7 to 3, you know, I really didn't have a chance to promote my book and to do things. And now that I work for myself, you know, I have all the time to pretty much do what I want to do and still to be able to have a, a successful life and a productive life. And then um, I, I have we're a good all pastor as well that took me up on the whole yeah. way. So I have good leadership, too. So that's what, um, you know, just made me comfort. I think it says a lot about your, your heart and your spirit because, see, people do, oftentimes people do judge us by that last bad thing that we did. Right. And for some reason, that's the only thing they can remember, no matter how you're trying, how you're pushing through it, your accomplishments after that, they still judge you based on that last bad thing that you did. So I think that's amazing and such a – we are grateful that you shared that with us so, because that will push somebody who hears your story, hears what you're going through, hears that you didn't let it stop you from making a successful life. And then you're continuing to give back because I did read somewhere where you um, mentor young adults and you help them see that every choice comes with a consequence. Why is that important to you to mentor that into them, that they understand you have the right to make your choices, but when you make that choice, think all the way, that's what I used to say to my children, think it all the way through to the end because there's going to be a consequence there and be sure you're ready to pay it. How important is that for you that you encourage them and help them see that? It's very important. And um, what I was going to say earlier was that, um, you know, I'm a mother. I have just one son. He's 38 years old. And, you know, and I instilled that into him, you know, all growing up. And it it really kind of like, you know, made me really feel bad, you know, when that happened. But he never uh, lost faith. You know, he never did lose faith in me. You know, he I'm his mother, and he know I did something that I didn't have in the business doing, but at the same time, it didn't deter him to go out and make those kind of mistakes. He's very successful. He's married, has one daughter. And, you know, and I look at that, you know, I honestly raised a good son, you know, and it's like I did the time so he don't have to go out and do the time. But uh, just mentioning to um younger adults and, and things like that, I just let them know, you know, it's easy to get caught up in something, but it's hard to get out. It's, it, it, there's just mm-hmm. nothing you want to go through. And I always like to talk to people that have, like, tax business and let them know, you know, one wrong punch on their, keypad, on their keyboard 
to land you in prayer group. And it's it's really sad that um, you know, some people have criminal minds, even though, you know, that was my first time getting in trouble at the age of forty four. I never had been in trouble, never had been arrested, never, you know, lived a life like that. But I just try to mentor to people and tell them, you know, just try it for the best. You know, if you have to get out and work two or three jobs to where you can get where you want to be, then that's what you have to do, especially if you have kids. So I just like to mentor pe- to people to stay hopeful, to stay prayed up, and to keep the faith, and God will see you through. Absolutely. Janice, this, this conversation could go on and on and on. It's, it's definitely a conversation that's dear to my heart. And I thank you for opening your life and sharing your life because I promise you the fact that you decided to share your story publicly is helping so many people to not go down the same road. And if they do make that bad decision, that that's not the end. You can take that bad decision and turn it into something amazing and still have a a wonderful life. So thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Dennis, tell our audience how they can stay connected with you. You can stay connected with me through um, Facebook uh, with my Janice Singleton um, first and last name. I really don't do Instagram too much, but I basically do Facebook, so you can find me on Facebook. And then if um, people would like to purchase my book, I am on Amazon as well as Walmart, and I do do book signings. But I haven't did a book signing in a while because of the pandemic. But I, you know, mm-hmm. would have book signings from here. You know, I would do book signings. But um, I can stay, I mean, they could stay connected with me basically through Facebook. Okay, wonderful. And we will make sure they, they do that. And when you do have something scheduled, let us know, and we'll make sure we make that announcement on our page as well. Deborah, let our audience know how to stay connected with you. Melissa, um, the audience can stay uh, connected with me, again, via Facebook at Deborah L. Hunter, author Deborah L. Hunter, Cooking with Honey and Frank, and the Deborah Hunter Collection. Thank you so much. And thank you again to our guests for being here today. And thank you to our audience for tuning in to today's edition of Dream by Design with Melissa Banks. I'm your host, Melissa Banks, saying, and to stay connected with us, simply go to the MelissaBanks.com. Remember, all your dreams are possible. Believe in yourself, work hard, and don't quit. Until next time, thank you for choosing Dream by Design with Melissa Banks. Enjoy your day.